everyone and welcome to our much anticipated van tour. If you're new to our channel, I'm B. this is Theo and behind us is our cat Gingy Bear. We're incredibly excited to finally put this tour out there because I know a lot of you guys have been waiting a long time for it. We actually moved into this van last November and we're currently on our way on an epic expedition all the way to the Arctic Circle. We're putting videos out every single week so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss them. It's been an amazing adventure so far and I can't wait to continue our journey. Now let's get on with this van tour. We don't know what's happening to me. When we were planning the conversion of the van, we really wanted to make sure that we took the most out of every single square inch that there was available in this small space. So the Mercedes Sprinter step is actually quite wide and it takes up the whole doorway. We were planning our kitchen to come all the way to the edge. So what we did was we created a shelf step on one side, which actually houses things like sandals, dry shampoo, random bits and pieces that we don't necessarily need all the time, but we do need access to. We also have underneath there the gas adapters for our LPG filling point. It's a refillable bottle and we put the filling point on the edge of the kitchen because it looks like when we go to fuel stations, we're actually filling up the van with LPG because in some countries, they really don't like you filling up refillable bottles in their fuel stations and then above that we've got a lovely little spice rack I bought that from actually a little thrift store in Billings in Montana where my family live in America and when I got it I thought I want to use this as a spice rack and it fits perfectly and just adds a little bit of charm to this side of the van so some more information about our step area there's actually a lot going on here we've got one of our heating points that come out we've got quite a few of these and i'll talk a bit more about the heating later on in the tour along the side here we've got oak which covers the edge of the step makes it look really homely and is actually a really hard wearing wood because we walk in and out of here so much every single day all three of us our cat as well even though she's got little paws she's still wearing it away ever so slowly and then along the edge here to cover up the original step we've got some really hard wearing material and then some good old trusty ikea floor matting which actually works really well at keeping dirt out of the van Welcome to the inside of our wonderful home and the heart of any home is definitely the kitchen. We really wanted to create a country kitchen vibe inside our van. She looks really mean from the outside and then you step in and she just looks so cozy and comfortable. And it was such a challenge actually to create it like this. We went through lots of different ideas about how we could make it how exactly we wanted it to be and it actually we ended up having to chop up this beautiful piece of furniture that we inherited from Theo's parents. We did film the whole thing and you can watch that video on our channel. We had a lot of people question why we did that but we had to make sure it would fit in with our van. After all building a van is quite tricky, there's a lot of different shapes, angles, all this sorts of stuff to take into consideration and also weight. So we cut this in half, we made sure that there was enough room to get through the partition here. This is our emergency escape hatch. The only person who really uses it is Gingy Bear, our cat but it's also a great way to have light coming in through the front, see what's going on outside, and also just have it as an emergency escape hatch if we ever did need to jump out and into the cab and drive away in the middle of the night. The cabinet is definitely the focal point of the entire kitchen, and we put a lot of thought into how it would work with being in a van because stuff moves around. So we put this copper pipe right at the top here that looks really nice and rustic, and kind of we went with a bit of a theme with the copper as you'll see later on in the tour so this keeps things up here like our tea my plastic plant because it's impossible to keep plants alive in a van unless they're a succulent and my plates so those kind of things they actually stay up there it's amazing and then behind it we've got the overhead storage this is an area that actually gets overlooked quite a lot and in the cab of the sprinter there was so much space above our heads it was insane so we put a shelf in there and it's fantastic for keeping things like towels spare jackets and gingy bear our cat loves to sleep in there we did really hope when we built it that she would use it as like a bedroom area but cats being cats you can't make them do anything but she loves to go up there. I don't even know how she manages to jump up there, but she does. So she spends time in there, gets space away from us, and we're all happy. Moving further on into the cabinet area, I've got storage on both sides for even more spices, random things that you wouldn't normally house together. 
like face wash, uh, spices, maple syrup, honey, cactus and my multivitamins because when you're in a van things usually live together that wouldn't normally because space is such a premium and then below both those shelves I've got little cupboards with the original doors from the original cabinet that we did cut in half. We had a lot of people confused about why we'd keep them because they're glass but it's very robust, they're nice and strong, they're totally safe and they keep everything in which is great. We did add our own handles and this is not the original paintwork of the cabinet. Like I said we did film the whole thing so you can definitely watch that and see how we made it go from drab to fab. <laughs> And then lower down we've got an oak worktop. This is a solid oak worktop which is a little bit crazy for a van. We went a bit overboard but like I said the kitchen was the focal point for us so we really wanted it to be exactly how we wanted it to be. In the middle of the kitchen countertop is an oven. This is an actual dream for me and I know it sounds really weird but from having a VW T4 with only one ring in it and living in that for 18 months cooking was very depressing so having two rings a grill and an oven is literally like living in luxury i highly recommend an oven if you're in a van it's a game changer it really makes it feel even more like home and you can cook literally anything and i just like to keep my chopping board on there because it looks good and then we've got our really beautiful sink now this is not a sink to wash up in as you can see I can just about get both my hands in I do use it to wash my face and I do use it to empty water out of that's mainly what it's for when we built the van we didn't want to waste a load of our kitchen space like I said space is a premium in a van we didn't want to waste it with a full-size sink so we have this small one here which is fantastic it's got a waste pipe that goes all the way outside from the van so I can pour our dirty water out of there and I actually do all of the washing up in a washing up bowl that I keep under the side. And that means that most of the time that I have all this room here. Oh my gosh, these mosquitoes are insane right now. I've got a swarm in front of my face. And the tap, I love it. It's so beautiful, it's copper. It fits in with the rest of the theme that we've got going on here. And uh, we've got a really, really simplistic water system going on here. It's a foot pump. There's absolutely no electrics involved. And it works perfectly for us because we know the exact amount of water that we're going to be using every time we pump down. In the bottom half of the kitchen here we've got our fridge and any decent kitchen needs a good fridge. They always come into their own when the weather's really hot and you want a nice cold drink with some ice which is what we have in here. This is an isotherm fridge. It's actually a little sparse right now but we've got our freezer up here where I've got some frozen vegetables, a frozen fruit and a frozen yogurt and then just random bits in here. So I will be restocking it but it's really great. I highly recommend getting a fridge. They're very useful. And then further along, we've actually got two reclaimed doors from the same cabinet that we used at the top of the kitchen there. These we put our own handles on and they house things like dry food and vegetables behind this one. And behind here, we've got pots, pans, and also our refillable gas bottle. And now we're in the living area of the van. It's situated between the kitchen and the bedroom. It's got a fantastic seating area which looks straight out of the side door or when the door's shut, we've got a massive window that also gives us a fantastic view wherever we're parked up. Now the flooring is actually laminate. It's waterproof and it looks like real wood. Obviously, if we could have used real wood, we would have, but doing a van build, you want to keep it as lightweight as possible and laminate flooring does seem way more realistic to use. So we're really happy with it. And because this is the only area of flooring, we only had to use, I think about one and a half packs of laminate, which was fantastic. The chairs are clad in birch ply, which is such a beautiful wood to use. We sanded it back and covered it with Osmo oil, which brought out the grain and we're so happy with how it looks. We've got a little magazine rack here. We really made use of the space that we had available. And like I said earlier, space is a premium in a van. So we made a little magazine rack here out of offcuts from the birch ply that doesn't get in the way when we slide out our toilet. So if you're wondering about our bathroom, yes, we have a toilet and it's underneath there. It's a composting toilet. It's so good. It's so easy to use. It means we don't have to worry about finding chemical 
uh, toilet disposal areas or anything like that. So it's great for us. And then next to that, we've got Gingy's composting toilet. So obviously traveling with a cat, we can't just let her out and go to the toilet whenever she wants to because cats do not do stuff like that. So she has a little litter tray, all the smell stays in there and it's really hygienic and a good place for her to go to the toilet. And then underneath there, she's got a name badge just in case she forgets what she's called. And then the final piece to the floor in the living area is Gingy's scratch post. Living with a cat means that she can claw things and we did make a bit of a boo-boo when we made the van. We carpeted some of the walls which was actually really stupid because hey it's a fantastic scratch post for Gingy Bear so we have this scratch post that she does use along with the carpet on the walls. <laughs> As I mentioned when I was sitting on the floor, we've got a really nice seating area. We actually got our cushions from an old caravan and had them reupholstered by Cat Upholstery, who also added a layer of memory foam, so they're super comfy and really nice to relax on. Our lighting system in the van is exposed conduit. We really went for the rustic, comfy vibe in our van and we love the theme of the exposed pipework on the wood. The lights themselves are very nautical. We used to live on a narrow boat, so we went for a nautical theme with the lights to really bring that memory with us in our van. On this wall here, we've actually got our YouTube plaque that we received when we hit 100,000 subscribers. It was a big milestone for us and we wanted to keep it with us at all times, so we actually built it into the wall of the van. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> and then behind me over here, we've got our electrical system. We've got our 240 volt plugs, we've got our heater, we've got our battery monitor, and we've also got USB plugs as well. So everything's there nice and neat. And as you can tell, we've got copper themes with the electrical stuff as well. So as I've mentioned a couple of times now, storage is super important in such a small space. And we had this area here under the bed and behind the chair that we couldn't reach from the garage, but we didn't want to let go to waste. So we put a shelf in and four crates from Ikea that slide out super easy. They're a great area to store more things, keep them out of the way and just not let any space go to waste. And here we are in the final living area of the van. It's our bedroom and it's such a lovely place to sleep. Our bed is actually a double mattress from Ikea. It's six foot long and so comfy, it's actually hard to get out of bed. It's on Ikea slats, so it's a proper normal bed. It's really good to have it on slats because it stays ventilated and our mattress is not moldy at all. Next to the bed, we've got a little window that's kind of like a vent in that when the roof vent in the kitchen's open, we get a really good draft comes through the bedroom area and through the whole van actually and just move the air around and cool it down and then on this side of the bedroom this is my side of the bed we have our custom made cupboard this was a bit tricky to make because we had to go with the curvature of the van but it worked out in the end and we're so happy that we persevered with it we've got copper at the top which matches the one in the kitchen it keeps the random things on here like our speaker and books teddies, makeup bags, all of that kind of stuff. They all stay up here, which is very handy. And then down here, we've got our own sections of the cupboard. So I've got all my clothes here. Theo has his clothes there. I have a drawer of just cosmetic stuff. <laughs> probably too much to be fair. Then we have electricals, another random drawer of notebooks and more books, and then our underwear drawer, which is combined together. So on the outside of our van, we've actually added quite a few modifications. And the reason for that is we do a lot of off-road driving, but we also are planning to drive this van all the way around the world. So that's a little bit of an exclusive for you. So make sure you subscribe. One of the main questions we get asked is about this snorkel. It takes the cleaner air when you're driving off road and takes that into the engine instead of taking all the, the dirty air from down low like you usually would. We've also added a light bar. Currently we're near the Arctic Circle and in these sort of countries where it stays dark a lot of the time or you're driving around at night, there can be moose in the road, there can be reindeer. So from a safety point of view, it's really good to have a light bar. It's also good at night when you're pulling up to a location, you're not really sure what's around you, you're wild camping. If you wanna check out if it's a good spot or not, the light bar is really helpful for that as well.
So one of the main things we had added to this vehicle is a lift kit. So we actually have five centimeters of extra lift and it makes it a little bit tricky climbing in and out of the habitation area. But it means that when we're driving off-road, it's really good because we've got that extra clearance. So that's really important if we're gonna be driving around the world. We also had these BF Goodrich all-terrain tires. They're the KO2s and they're 245. 75 R16s. So coming around the back of the van, we've got this beautiful rear wheel carrier. This is made by a guy called Williams. He's on Instagram, go check him out. And as well as looking beautiful, it serves a purpose. We can no longer fit this massive all-terrain tire in the stock carrier under the van. So we had to fit this, but I'm pretty pleased with how it looks. So one of the most exciting parts about this project for me was installing the front runner roof rack. This thing is amazingly well made and allows you to add so many different accessories. So the other side of the van, we actually have an ax mounted on the side because we love a good campfire. We also have a shovel if we need to get ourselves out of any situations or you need to go to the toilet in the woods. We've got a 335 watt solar panel. It's a beast. That is also on the roof rack. And we have a storage container. We have our motorhome Wi-Fi 4G booster, which is amazing. That gives us internet pretty much anywhere we go. And we also have a jerry can holder. This thing's really important for when we need that extra fuel capacity. So last but not least, we have our garage area in the back of our van. It's absolutely massive and it spans the whole length of our bed. We almost don't have enough stuff to actually store in here, it's so big. To this side is one of the most important parts of our van and that is power. We went for two times 100 amp hour lithium batteries. Because we work from the road, it's really important that we stay connected, we stay powered up. We have a Victron 600 watt uh, inverter charger, as well as a Victron MPPT for the 335 watt solar panel uh, on the roof. We also have a split charge relay that allows us to charge the batteries when we are driving, which is really useful. It's gonna be useful in the winter when we're really far north and there's not much daylight at all. So we're not gonna be able to get much solar coming in. We also have shore power. So if there was a problem and we are running low, we can find somewhere that we can plug in, maybe go to a campsite if we really need to and top our batteries up. But so far we haven't needed to use that. Over this side, we have our water situation. And you might be wondering, why didn't we go for like a nice big underslung tank? And that is because we go to some very cold countries where it can get minus 20 degrees and you can weatherproof and winterize your water tanks, but we just felt it was safer for us to have the water tanks inside. These water tanks are brilliant because we can actually take them out and go to a water source to fill them up and we don't need to take the van to the tap. So in the middle of the garage, we've got our retractable ladder. This thing's great. It fits nicely in the garage, takes up hardly any room, and that is what I use to get to the roof rack. We didn't want a ladder on the outside because the stuff on the roof is a very valuable and we don't want people wandering up and down a ladder without our consent. So that is why we went for the retractable ladder. It's also useful for getting cats out of trees if uh, our cat happens to go up a tree, which she does a fair bit. So next to the ladder, we have our recovery tracks. These are great for if we get stuck in sand or mud. We haven't had to use them yet, but I'm sure one day we will. They're always useful to have in the back. They also fit on the roof rack as well if we need the extra space. But like I said, we've got tons of space, so they're in here for now. Also, we have heating duct that comes underneath into the garage and it shoots warm air into this whole area so it never gets damp and also it keeps our water tanks nice and warm in the winter. So we mentioned in the tour that we're going to talk about our heater and it's a Wabasto Airtop Evo 40 and so far it's been absolutely incredible. It's a diesel heater and it's plumbed straight into our diesel tank so we don't have to carry any separate fuel. 
it's not gas, so it doesn't give off uh, horrible condensation like uh, gas heating does. And we definitely recommend it. It's been amazing so far, and we're going to really put it to the test when we hit the Arctic Circle. If you're interested in anything that we've used in this van, like the oven, like the lighting, like the heater, anything in it, I've created a list of all the stuff we used in our van conversion. So check that out. That's in the description. And I think that's it. We're really happy that you've watched it this far. It's been a labor of love for us. We've built our perfect home, and we're just so happy to be on the road. Drop us a comment down below on what's your favourite part of our van and we'll see you on the next video.